Coming up on DTNS, we've got a new power-efficient Bluetooth standard for you Airbud fans. Sony has a car. You heard that right. AMD lurches forward. Will it put them ahead in laptops? And James Cameron designed a car. You also heard that right. So there's that and much more from CES 2020. This is the Daily Tech News for January 7th, 2020 in Las Vegas at CES 2020. I'm Tom Merritt. And I'm Sarah Lane. And uh, I'm off camera, but I'm the show's producer. <laughs> also joining us, Sherilyn Lowe, Reviews Editor and Gadget. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, you guys. I uh, appreciate you walking anywhere during <laughs> CES, especially here. Oh, man. I But that's where I go yeah. once a year. I have you looked up. at Do you have do a step count? Well, it's, it's at least 10,000, yeah, I mean, maybe 20. Definitely, 15. easily <laughs> yeah. 10,000. Uh, Pete Wells, columnist for the Sydney Morning Herald, welcome back. Thank you, Tom. Yes, I, I cracked 22,000 steps yesterday. So, really? Yeah. Wow, I'm, I don't even want to look. That's yeah. crazy. Uh, folks, we were talking a little bit about our, our wider impressions of CES and what we've been doing and the chicken and waffles at the press events on Good Day Internet. You get that wider show if you become a patron at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Not from CES, but still big news. SpaceX launched another 50 satellites in its Starlink network, bringing the total of spacecraft it has in the sky to 182. That's the most commercial satellites of any company. A Falcon 9 rocket launched from Cape Canaveral in Florida to deliver the satellites. The U.S. executive branch proposed new regulatory principles regarding AI development and use, saying that federal agencies should, quote, promote trustworthy AI and, quote, must consider fairness, non-discrimination, openness, transparentness, transparency, safety, and security. Last year, the European Commission's high-level expert group on artificial intelligence issued its own set of ethical guidelines for the European Union. Facebook announced in a blog post it will not allow deep fake videos created by AI or machine learning algorithms on its platforms and will remove content that has been edited, quote, in ways that aren't apparent to an average person and would likely mislead someone. The policy does not include parody or satire. At Tesla's opening ceremony for the company's China-made Model Y, program at its factory in Shanghai, Elon Musk predicted that ultimately Tesla Model Y will have more demand than probably all other cars of Tesla combined. The factory started with a production capacity of 150,000 Model 3 sedans and a goal of 250,000 vehicles a year, including the Model Y, in the plant's first phase. And I commend Sarah Lane, who wrote this blurb up for not including anything about Elon's dance. <laughs> Just it wasn't going to do it. The FBI sent a letter to Apple asking for help unlocking the two iPhones of a man believed to have killed three people at Naval Air Station Pensacola. The FBI has requested help from other agencies and countries as well, although, of course, it thinks Apple would be the most helpful. Apple said that the FBI requested information last month, but the company has given the agency all the data it had but we'll continue to offer help. We'll see where that goes. And Sonos has sued Google in federal district court in the United States and at the International Trade Commission, accusing Google of infringing five Sonos patents, including how wireless speakers connect and sync with one another. And Sonos says it believes both Google and Amazon each violated roughly 100 patents overall. Sonos seeks financial damages and the usual ITC ban on the sale of Google's speakers, smartphones, and laptops in the United States. Wouldn't that be something? I mean, the, the, everybody <laughs> always bans, as ITC yeah, for a ban. All, all y'all. If the ban happens, all it always stuff. happens by the time the product's like off the shelves, but there you go. All right, let's talk about CES. We'll start by highlighting some of the announcements getting the most buzz in the last 24 hours here. Start us off, Sarah. All right, so let's start with Google. Google. Google's been making somewhat of a tradition to announce new Google Assistant features at CES, telling it, read this page. We'll now have the Assistant read the relevant text of a web page. You can now schedule actions by saying things like, turn on the lights at 6 p.m. On smart displays, you can create sticky notes by saying things like, leave a note that says, don't forget your power cord, Tom Merritt. <laughs> and also on smart displays, you can create... <laughs> you can create speed dial numbers for easy assistant access. And interpreter mode is launching out of beta to let businesses add it through partnerships with Sonify and Voltara. And on the privacy front, you can also say something like, that wasn't for you to tell the assistant to delete the record of an accidental activation. You can also do a few other privacy settings like delete everything that you said over the last week. <laughs> Maybe you had a bad week. Who knows? <laughs> Clear cache, cookies, stuff like that. All of this will come in that magical time known as later this year. Sherilyn, you wrote this up for Engadget. What do you think of all these features? 
I think that assistants getting smarter, getting a lot more human-like. Um, the natural speaking, um, you know, tweaks that they've tried to make are going to help us interact with assistant the way we would with each other, right? Mm. Like I'd be like, oh yeah, that wasn't for you, or like scratch that. Um, I haven't seen them in action just yet, and I'm about to go to check out their booth. But overall, assistant's one of my favorite digital helpers there is. It's the most powerful, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm totally um, uh, in the assistant camp as well. Um, I just love, uh, I mean, I've got a bunch of them across my house and, I mean, Amazon came late to the game in Australia, so I, I think um, Google was able to uh, to use that to, to build their market. But, uh, yeah, I, I love just the little things that I notice of when I walk into, say, my living room and say, turn on the light, it's now gotten smart enough to know you're in that room, therefore that light will come on, rather than me having to specifically mention... Uh, a room slot or a room's, yeah. you know. Getting mm -hmm. it more conversational is, yes. is, is always a good thing. Uh, the Bluetooth SIG introduced new Bluetooth features under the umbrella term Bluetooth LE Audio. Uh, one of them is the Low Complexity Communication Code, or LC3, that will reduce power consumption while increasing the audio quality, something that is really badly done under the SBC codec. If you increase the quality, it increases your power consumption. So it'll be an alternative to the SBC codec, also an alternative to Qualcomm's proprietary aptX. Bluetooth LE Audio will also officially support hearing aids now, working with more devices, including with televisions. Uh, and also kind of with hearing aids, a new broadcast feature will let movie theater audiences use Bluetooth headphones, something that could help those with hearing aids as well. But you could do all kinds of broadcasts with that. And multi-stream will let each earbud receive its own stream rather than having to have the earbuds communicate with each other. Multi-stream should also let you share one or audio source among multiple users. And Apple, uh, kind of similar to Apple's proprietary spec that they use in the AirPods. Finally, specs for Bluetooth LE audio will come out through the first half of 2020, meaning we'll probably see the very first devices maybe for the holidays, but most of them will come next year, 2021. I love the movie theater for people hard of hearing idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that that's just one use case, but that's, that's so obvious and great. Yeah, and, and you can use Bluetooth with hearing aids right now, but it's a little bit of a kludge, so this should make it easier. And, also, and also the two head, the two phones talking to each other, because there's always that one where I'm like, ah, come on, yeah, left the one, ear. The one that just stops. Left or ear, gets out come of on, talk to the right ear. Yeah. Uh, our, our Arduino launched a new low-code platform and modular hardware system for IoT development. Arduino Portenta. H7 includes a crypto authentication chip, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth LE, LTE, and narrowband IoT modules. It runs on either the Cortex M7 or M4 32-bit ARM microcontroller. It runs ARM's Embed OS, supports Arduino code, Python, and JavaScript, and is meant for designing industrial applications, edge processing solutions, and robotics. It's available to beta testers now and coming to all in February. Yeah, this is really exciting for the people this is really exciting for. Uh, <laughs> it'll, it'll show up in something where you're like, wow, how do you do that? And they're like, well, we developed it with this Arduino system. But it's it's that kind of IoT system stuff that we don't see enough press around, I think. And 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 it's getting a lot of buzz amongst developers here. Yeah, I love seeing uh, when I wander down to, I work for a university as my day job, and I, when I wander down to the computer science area and see what they're doing with the, the Arduinos down there, it always blows my mind. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, if you're in the enterprise, maybe, and this is the kind of thing that's exciting for you, uh, get, shoot us an email, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. All right, we talked about Wi-Fi 6 routers, their de rigueur here at CES, but a couple of Netgear models seem to be getting a little more attention than others. The Nighthawk Mesh Wi-Fi System 6 is a dual-band mesh system supporting the Wi-Fi Easy Mesh standard, and it's probably the price that's getting the attention. It's a two-pack for $229.99, which for these mesh networks is a pretty good deal. Uh, Three-pack and individual nodes will be available in March. We don't have prices on those. But it's a little bit limited. Two by two array, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz networks, no dedicated backhaul channel at launch, so they say they might add it with a firmware update, and a max capacity of four nodes in a system. If you have a palatial estate, this is not going to cover it, but it's good up to 1,500 square feet, has a max capacity of 1.8 gigabits per second throughput, but that's with all your stuff on it. So Netgear says it's probably not good for gigabit homes. It's best for 300 per second. Netgear also announced the Nighthawk M5 5G mobile hotspot. This one has my attention. It supports millimeter wave and sub six orientation. So whatever 5G service is out there, this is going to work with it. Uh, output 
It's Wi-Fi 6, and it'll be available unlocked or from carriers starting in May. Netgear says it should support speeds up to 4 gigabits per second and includes a gigabit Ethernet port on it, so you can just plug it straight into your laptop. Netgear also released a Wi-Fi 6 extender for your ISP's modem and a Doxus 3.1 Wi-Fi 6 cable modem uh, that you could replace your ISPs with, or maybe some ISPs will pick that one up. Uh, but I, I don't know if any of these excite any of you guys, but... 5G for me. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Like Park, right? yeah, yeah, I like it. No, nothing else? No, no router <laughs> love? Millimeter wave, millimeter yeah. wave, finally. Yeah, the fact that, it, that you, I don't have to think about which implementation I'm on, that's great. And the fact that I can get it unlocked. I love the Ethernet port. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's super cool. Samsung's Star Lab subsidiary released some details on the Neon project that was teased last week. The idea is to make digital avatars that you can interact with as if they were actually really people, real people. They will be accessible by screen or possibly as holographic displays. Star Labs suggests that they could be teachers or financial advisors, healthcare providers, or concierge as examples. A neon could also be an actor, a TV anchor, maybe a video podcast host. I don't know. Probably. That's a terrible idea. You need yeah. real humans for that. We must stop them. <laughs> Star, <laughs> Star Lab says that they could be based on real people, but doesn't intend to make replicas. And because it's powered by machine learning, the avatars can learn from experience so they can get better over time. More details on cost, implementation, etc. will likely come at Neon World 2020, which takes place later this year. Already has its own conference. Yeah. <laughs> So that's good. I've been walking by them on the show floor before it was open. Right. With, they didn't have their signage up, and I just thought they were pictures of people talking about a product. Oh. And then today I noticed it was neon. I'm like, okay, those are pretty convincing yeah. looking. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, did, I wasn't seeing them actually in action, but uh, I, if this were in an airport giving information, eh, it could be cute, right? I don't know. Charlotte doesn't seem I've impressed. seen it in movies, and I think that there, yeah, people yeah. run into limits. For mm -hmm. sure, but, yeah. Oh, know. I'm sorry. I can't answer that. Will be the most yeah. frequent response. Yeah. Enjoy. No comment. Financial advisor, Sarah, you're in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about a savings account? <laughs> <laughs> like yes. You're That's not it. saving enough. Yeah. I, I don't know. This is this is the kind of thing that it seems like it's too early right now to be useful, but uh, and and makes a good demo probably better than a product, but maybe it'll go somewhere. There was a lot of hype around it, I think, because Samsung was just so mysterious with yeah. teasing it on Twitter, and I think that that contributed to just all of the attention it's getting right now, maybe. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. Uh, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to our other show, DailyTechHeadlines.com. Super quick. All right, let's get into these CES press conferences that happened uh, all the way through the end of yesterday, after yesterday's show, starting with Sony. Uh, Sony surprised everyone by announcing a car. The Sony Vision S, an electric sedan with 33 sensors, a dashboard wide display, which that's the thing now on mm -hmm. your concept car, uh, your soon shipping car, your electric car, uh, seat back screens, 360 audio, partnered with BlackBerry and Bosch on the car, BlackBerry for the software, Bosch for the parts. Uh, the EV platform was designed in partnership with automotive supplier Magna and Sony's image sensor division announced it's going to start investing in LiDAR and time of flight camera development. That makes perfect sense. Uh, they, they probably get some money out of that. Sony will use the car to evaluate its auto related tech starting in April. And a spokesman told Reuters that Sony has no plans to produce its own cars. So this literally is just a test bed for Sony tech. It looks so, so cool. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed that they're not going to release it. But uh, yeah, no, it, it looks like a fun thing to play with. Yeah, I mean, concept cars are always meant to look good. But uh, I was actually, I unlike you, I was glad Sony wasn't going to make a car because <laughs> I, I would only inevitably be disappointed for it. This this seems sensible, especially when you consider that Sony images, yeah. image sensors make the money for Sony, right? So uh, I, I feel like that's super smart. Uh, Sony also said the PlayStation 5 will arrive for the holiday season, which is also when the Xbox Series X is coming. So there you go. PS5 will have 3D audio, haptic, haptic adaptive triggers, ultra high-speed solid-state drive, hardware-based ray tracing and Blu-ray. Uh, and in talking about the PlayStation 5, announced that they have now sold 5 million PlayStation VR headsets, which, you know, for VR, not bad. Anybody excited about PS5? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> no, no pressure. You don't have We're to just be. waiting on each other, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like that the logo looks exactly the same. I think that's what Twitter was all a buzz about. I don't know. I know, because they're like, with new logo, if they hadn't made a big deal yeah. about, here's our new logo, yeah. that's not new. It just has a five instead of a four. I don't think anybody would have noticed, yeah. really. But, you know. Uh, back to TVs. The trend at this year's CES seems to be to take pride in announcing smaller televisions alongside your gargantuan televisions. Uh, Sony announced the 48-inch Master Series A9S. 
its smallest 4K OLED TV ever. That sounds familiar. LG announced its smallest ever 48-inch OLED TV. Likely both of them are using LG display panels, so expect to see more people announcing their smallest ever 48-inch OLED display as time goes on. Uh, the 48-inch A9S from Sony uses Sony Acoustic Surface technology. That projects sound from the panel so that it makes it appear to come from the picture. And Sony announced its 75 and 85-inch 8K Sony Z8H uses something called frame tweeter, basically using the frame of the television as a tweeter. It vibrates to create the sound that can be directionally delivered based on what's happening on the screen. So it's a little bit of a, a, a point to point sound, like kind of like we were talking about yesterday with other models. The Z8H also runs Google Assistant. And among other new models is the X950H, which has Google Assistant and a sound from picture reality feature that delivers directional sound based on what's happening on screen. That's definitely a trend. Whole range of TVs run Android 9 Pie, support Apple AirPlay 2, HomeKit, and Google and Amazon voice services. They also feature ambient optimization to optimize the picture and sound for your room conditions. Uh, you, you calibrate the sound during setup, but the room stuff just happens based on the lighting. No price or availability on pretty much anything here. But this, I mean, this is just highlighting the trends. Uh, sound coming directionally from your picture, ambient condition adaptation. Seems you, like Sony's right in line. You know, the 48-inch does seem to be the sweet spot for this and also world's smallest OLEDs. Yeah. Well, They're always 48-inch. They're, they're, they're all world's small. Yeah, it's, it's it, 48 inches is still not a very small television but smaller than the one that I have now. But I wonder how much you're going to get out of directional sound coming from the smaller screens. It seems to be something that, you know, if you got an 85-inch, you're really going to notice. But most people don't have rooms and can, you know, have the capacity for that. It also feels like the kind of thing you'll just get used to. Like, it'll be impressive the first time you notice it, and then you'll stop noticing it. Right. Yeah. yeah. What about AMD? Oh, AMD. AMD announced the Ryzen 4000 series of chips, the first laptop chips made on the 7 nanometer Zen 2 architecture. That new architecture makes the 4000 chips twice as power efficient as the second gen Ryzen's. AMD was also says that the Ryzen 7 4800 benchmarks 4% better than the Intel Core i7 1065G7, 28% better, 90% better for multi-thread cases, which could help AMD take the laptop performance lead back from Intel's 10 nanometer Ice Lake chips. The 64-core AMD Threadripper 3990X will come out February 7th for uh, $3,990, $3,990. So for businesses, with big budgets to add to workstations, this is probably a good thing. But it also looks like AMD is gaining an advantage in workstations because it has a 2.9 gigahertz base and a 4.3 gigahertz boost. AMD back in the game. Not that they were out of the game, but the keeping in the game. Let's, let's put it that way, yeah. Also, the Radeon RX 5600 X delivers 1080p between 90 and 120 frames per second. The new Radeon 5600 XT has 36 compute units, 2,304 stream processors, 8 gigs of GDDR6 memory, and up to 7.19 teraflops. The 5600 XT will sell for $279 January 21st. Yeah, so that eye-watering $4,000 Threadripper uh, price really makes this $279 look appealing. Sure does. It? does. Uh, yeah. Also, Microsoft's Phil Spencer showed off a picture of the Series X CPU, and AMD showed off the console during their press conference, including a shot of the ports on the back, including oh. two USB-C ports, two HDMI ports, Ethernet, and a power slot. That was the wrong picture, right? Oh, was it wrong? The uh, AMD used a picture source from like a fan web re render oh, website, so I'm not sure if this is entirely so accurate. So that, so that, those port, those ports may, may or may be, not be real. Yeah. Microsoft yeah. did tweet out after. Interesting. That. I will say that uh, just five years ago, people were wondering what would happen to AMD because they're always in the, you know, in, in second last place, uh, and you know, kind of just destined for the bargain bin all the time. And that ship has turned, and not just a little, like it's. Mm -hmm changed one uh, 180 degrees and all i can say is look at intel yeah yeah well speaking of intel uh intel had its press conference yesterday too showing off the next generation tiger lake a lake wow. full of tigers <laughs> uh the tiger lake core mobile chips in a 17 inch foldable oled tablet codenamed horseshoe bend tiger lake is coming later this year and intel promises double digit performance game uh, improvement for ai processing and thunderbolt 4 uh, which is supposed to be four times as fast as USB 3.0. You just saw the horseshoe bend, I right? I did just saw, see the horseshoe bend. It is it is as janky as you'd expect a prototype to be, but more finished than most that I've seen. It's not 3D printed. It feels like it's metallic, and it's at 
15.3 inch tablet that you can fold in half. Did you get to hold it? I did. How it was, heavy is it? It's 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 almost as heavy as I think the ThinkPad X1 Fold actually, which okay. is only 13.3 right, inches. Right, right. That's not so bad. So not too heavy, but folding it was difficult. Definitely. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's a very extra sturdy hinge. Were you worried as you? Folded it like is it? Some I kind heard of... like, and I was like, "Well, let's not break. This. They're going to. They're not going to invite me back." Breaking news, though. Yeah, like breaking. literally. <laughs> Uh, Intel also showed its Z GPU platform, including DG1, its first discrete graphics card. The platform will come integrated with Tiger Lake processors first, which Intel showed running Warframe. Uh, Intel announced a deeper partnership with Google to design chips and specs for Chromebook built on Project Athena. Project Athena is the one that covers uh, specs like fast wake, increased battery life, Wi-Fi 6, touch displays, two-in-one capability, narrow bezels goes on. Uh, Google wants to move Chromebooks beyond education. They want to get into, and they've been, they've been wanting this for a long time, but they're making a point of saying we really, really, really want to be in consumer and enterprise markets. And Intel says Project Athena uh, should evolve to include other form factors, dual displays, uh, etc. Intel also released a video of an autonomous car navigating the streets of Jerusalem for about 20 minutes, guided by 12 mobile eye cameras and no other sensors. The point was, we can do 3D models from 2D images, so we don't need LiDAR, we don't need radar, because mobile eye is great, uh, is what Intel's saying. Uh, processing on the car was done with two IQ5 chips. Mobile eye also announced just now an agreement to test and deploy a robotaxi service in Daegu City, South Korea. Uh, so they're, they're going to get some tests out in the world as well. Shall we move on to Dell? I, unless there are other thoughts on Intel, yeah. Uh, I will say the Z GPU is a long time coming, starting with Project Larrabee, what, six, seven years ago? Mm. And people thought that it was literally just a dead end, but uh, this is kind of what it ended up being. And I, I totally agree with you, Roger, about um, AMD versus Intel. I, I thought Intel really, really needed a strong CES this year because I think they've got um, a, a very troubling 2020 ahead of them, and I don't think it was, should have been. And as always, the winners will be us, the consumers. I just want to shout out that Chromebook thing. I don't know if you're going to get to it, but the the Chromebook pro project, Athena Chromebook, that made well, it's made by Samsung. It's called the Galaxy Chromebook, and it is hot as hell. Yeah, we we so, mentioned it yesterday, but you, you got Isn't to see it. it? It's gorgeous. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Sarah so wasn't pretty. convinced on the color. I didn't like the red. There's a silver. Yeah, the silver's fine. Yeah. I just thought, I like you know, it. everyone else on the panel was like, "Red's well, cool," and I'm like, "All right." Yeah. That's have your wrong. have your red computer. <laughs> 4K AMOLED if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now moving on to Dell. Dell showed off concept UFO, a Windows handheld gaming console with a Switch-like form factor, an 8-inch display, support for PC gaming as well. It can play games in handheld or dock modes. The controllers could be bridged together into one big controller with a bridge as well. And ours Technica tried out Mortal Kombat 11 on it and guessed it was running 720p. Dell Alt Duet, a dual screen device with two 13.3 inch screens connected by a hinge. A physical keyboard accessory could connect to one of the screens, taking about half of it. There's also Concept Ori, a tablet with a 13.4 inch POLED foldable screen, similar to Lenovo's ThinkPad X1 Folds. And to round out Dell's big news, the company also announced the G515 special edition to its G5 gaming laptop line, running on AMD's Renoir H Ryzen laptop processor along the Radeon RX 5600M GPU. The G5 and AMD come both in April, starting at $799. With AMD, rather. You, just the you one. You got to see some of the concept stuff, right? I've been looking at all the concepts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see. We saw this um, uh, ahead of CES, which was great. Again, Dell has, it's just kind of, trying to like tell you, yeah, we're also doing this. I know Lenovo is going out with theirs officially, but we're also working on it. And they're just kind of just testing out what works and what their software engineers might have to kind of compensate for if Windows 10X comes out without certain features mm -hmm. um, that they think users might want. Right. Is the uh, UFO as ugly in real life as it is in it pictures? It actually looked all right. Okay. I like it. I just bought a Switch, so um, mm -hmm. I'm actually kind of stoked for the UFO. You know? Yeah, well, it's, it's just a bigger screen. Yeah. Well, a little chunkier, right? A little but, chunkier. But, yeah. But, but they have time to refine it. It's still a, a, a concept, mm -hmm. so... Uh, Razer also had its press conference. I, I swear, we only have a couple more press conferences. Razer <laughs> announced its first homemade gaming box, the Razer Tomahawk, uh, built on the Intel NUC system, so element modular computing. Uh, it's a 10-liter box where you can swap out 
the module. Uh, so your module can be up to 45 watts Core i9 9980HK mobile CPU. And then there's slots in there for memory storage and your Wi-Fi 6 radio. Razer provides the power supply, graphics card, SSD, fans, RAM, operating system, all of that stuff. And, of course, the enclosure. A full turnkey system ships in June, starting around 2300 bucks. And Razer may also sell the enclosure on its own. So you can go buy your own module and your own parts and fill it up. Uh, Razer announced Kishi for Android and iOS. It attaches to the sides of your phone and connects to USB-C or Lightning with pass-through ports for charging and should work with cloud services like xCloud and Stadia. Razer product produced Kishi in partnership with GameVice, so it should be available in early 2020. They don't have a price on it yet, though. Probably around 100 bucks, uh, which is what the Android-only version of this for Razer uh, is going for now. Razer, also, also good for a CES concept or two, the Sila 5G home router concept. Uh, if it becomes a real product, would automatically prioritize bandwidth for gaming and streaming. So trying to keep it ultra low latency, keeping pings from interrupting you. Users can customize which devices get the priority. It would have a built-in battery, so you could take it to your LAN party uh, and be the LAN at the LAN party. Uh, it has a SIM slot, can do 4G LTE as well as 5G. And Razer has a concept for an e-racing simulator rig, which is just too crazy to get into describing right now. But it's basically a the inside of a car that you hook up to, to to a gaming machine. A Kishi sounds pretty cool. Yeah, the Kishi sounds nice, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It seems like it, it seems like of all these announcements, something that I'd be like, that would actually work really well for me. Now, Samsung apparently had something left to announce in their press conference last night. Their if you can conference. believe it, it's true. Samsung announced Bali, a small yellow rolling robot that follows you around and acts like a smart assistant controlling smart home devices and responds to commands with chirps rather than spoken words. So basically, baby Yoda. But, you know, just from Samsung. Mm. Right? Samsung also showed off a pair of augmented reality glasses guiding you through exercises. The idea is that you wear the Samsung Gems exo exoskeleton. That was shown off last year, you might recall, which tracks your movement so the AR trainer can then give feedback. You could also review your exercise afterwards to look for areas of improvement. <laughs> that would be good for me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Bali? I think Bolly is super cute. I, I love any kind of robot that goes, uh, that doesn't try to mimic humans and, mm. and has that kind of like little chirpy noise. Yeah. There was, there was one from LG about two years ago, I think. And yeah. There, there was one at Pepcom oh. that had a beautiful description of um, emotionally available robot. <laughs> it's weird. The, the designs usually go from kind of anthropomorphic to Wally. -E. Mm. I mean, that's, those are like the two, like, we Bolly. Want Oh, yeah, Bali or you know Wally like the the Pixar, but you know where you want where you have a square with that has like very you know emotional eyes or you know some sort of feature that makes it lovable but doesn't look like. A I just wonder, and I do this with my dog. If you sometimes would just be like, Bali, God, give me some space. Stop following me around. It'll mope. I don't want you right now. Moping mode. Yeah. <laughs> right. Chirp. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it is fascinating, though, to be like, you know, with these, a lot of these smart speakers, all they ever say is, I'm sorry, I can't find that. So a chirp is a little less annoying, maybe, mm -hmm. when that happens. All right. Uh, CES has a lot of products. We're not going to go through all of them, although it may seem like that right now. Mm -hmm. But we have a few more highlights we want to touch on. TiVo announced a streaming dongle called the TiVo Stream 4K, running Android TV. It has the familiar TiVo interface, including TiVo Plus, and integrates Sling TV for its live TV and Sling's cloud DVR, while also providing some Pluto TV-like TiVo Plus channels as well, all in the familiar TiVo grid guide. The TiVo Plus interface can also show you what shows you like, which shows you're watching in the TiVo Plus recommendations, just like on the DVR. It's based on what it knows, and it integrates not only Sling and the TiVo Plus channels, but partners as well. So far, they've announced Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Vudu, PBS, MLB.TV, WWE, The CW, YouTube, Pandora, Google Play, and they say there's more to come. Uh, the dongle itself plugs into an HDMI port, supports Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision HDR. They're going to sell the device for $50 at the beginning, but it'll eventually go up to $70. And TiVo says it's hoping to strike partnerships to bundle it with internet service and, and maybe even get it embedded in other devices like, like cable boxes and, and the like. Uh, so I, I think this is the kind of thing that cutting edge adopters like us probably aren't as excited about, but might be easier to get someone into streaming video who's like, okay, I'm familiar with the TiVo guy. That's an interface I'm comfortable with. Yeah, and actually loves TiVo still. I mean, yeah, yeah. TiVo was back in the day, and still for some people, you know, very beloved uh, interface. So if, if it can kind of 
keep uh, up with the competition. And there's that's a good lineup of partners out of the gate. Then, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so Apple can't get Netflix integrated into its Apple TV app. TiVo was able to pull it off. So, yeah. Yeah. Might say more about Netflix and Apple, really. It says more about, yeah, who's... <laughs> Who's willing to compromise TiVo? Yeah, probably. Right. Yeah. TiVo's not making their own shows yet. Just yet. All right, moving on to Qualcomm. Qualcomm announced its Snapdragon Ride platform with multi-core CPUs, AI, and computer vision engines and CPU to power autonomous cars. It can do 30 tera, tera operations per second, like uh, the acronym TOPS, I suppose it is, for advanced driver assistant programs and more than 700 TOPS at 13 watts for, 130 watts rather, for autonomous driving. The platform also includes software for localization, perception, and behavior prediction. Qualcomm will focus on advanced driver assistant systems at first, but says the platform is capable of supporting fully autonomous cars. Snapdragon Ride is expected to be available for pre-development to automakers and the tier one suppliers in the first half of 2020. Qualcomm hopes to have the Snapdragon Ride chips in production cars in 2023. I mean, their big advantage is power efficiency, right? Uh, so, so they can probably get some people to get on board for advanced driver systems because of that. Whether they can get uh, people to put this in autonomous cars, I'm a little skeptical about. I think we're far out from there, and I also don't drive, so I don't know very much about self-driving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to be driven around by a yeah. self-driving car, though. Yeah. Pete, what about you? Uh, yeah, it's, I, I find it really interesting that... Are the, the players who have become big uh, in the self-driving car models just because they they did one thing very very well and then realized that self-driving um, self-driving cars required so much data being passed through so quickly that you know graphic graphic designers uh, sorry graphic uh, card makers and things like that have naturally fallen into it. I just find that side a bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. or I also don't drive so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Concept cars are always a little silly. Uh, they don't have to have any relationship to reality really in any way, but sometimes they're just too concepty to ignore. Uh, witness the Avatar themed Mercedes Benz Vision AVTR, which Cameron helped design. So, yeah, that Avatar, the, the movie. Uh, the entire rear of the car is covered in 33 bionic flaps which people who don't work from Mercedes will call scales, because that's what they look like. Uh, <laughs> somehow you're supposed to use the flaps to communicate with people outside the car. I'm imagining, like, stop tailgating would just show up on there, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, the wheels are spheres, so you can move sideways, diagonally, uh, however you want. They also said it would be easier on the forest floor when you're driving. They literally said that. Uh, it's meant to be a design for an autonomous car, so there's no steering wheel. Instead, it has an oval-shaped controller that can pop up from the center console. I thought, oh, we'll get like an interesting take on what the interface of an autonomous car might eventually be. But for some reason, it vibrates along with your breathing and heart rate, like the Navi. Uh, and because it's a concept car, it's also powered by a compostable graphene-based organic battery cell that doesn't require rare earth minerals and also doesn't exist yet. But it's technically possible, so I guess they could put it in there. I was at another uh, press conference, and I got a push notification on my phone saying, James Cameron is about to step on stage. I was like, oh, gosh, <laughs> what is this? All right, let's bring it bring it back down to Earth, Sarah. Let's do it. Sherlyn, you wrote up the fossil Skagen Falzer 3. Am I saying that right? I Skagen Falzer 3, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Follow up to the Falzer 2 Wear OS watch. You said it was more, uh, you were more interested in the limited edition X by Kygo, yeah. that, that variant. Mm -hmm. The Falzer 3 is available now for $295 with the limited edition Kygo model coming later this month. Fitbit shareholders approved the Google buyout Monday, meaning that Google is on track to own Fitbit this year. Uh, so what do you think? Wear OS, watch market? Smart What's happening watch, there? Smart watches, people are still trying to make it work. Wear OS has been stagnating, kind of like lagging competitors like Apple Watch, Samsung. Um, and I think this Fitbit acquisition is going to give Google that injection it needs to really give us some exciting news again. I don't know how that will pan out, but we'll see. The Wear OS watch, the Skagen Falster 3 itself was all right. <laughs> So at best, this, <laughs> this is a fallow period for Wear OS. It it's sounds sad. Like. It's yeah. sad. We haven't heard a lot of news out of um, of Google on that front, but I'm sure we will see very much more this year. Yeah, I, I cannot believe uh, how few updates uh, Wear OS has had since it, you know, I mean, it basically uh, created the market and then fell backwards. 
All right, Sarah, let's sprint to the end. Yeah, you know, we came back to Earth. Let's go back into the sky. Hyundai's personal air flying car concept carries five people at an altitude of 1,000 to 2,000 feet, charges in five to seven minutes, has a range of 60 miles. Hyundai says that Uber Elevate will be one of its first customers. The company has yet to conduct test flights, but Hyundai also showed concepts for a whole transportation system, including a landing hub with docking stations with special vehicles for ground transportation. Uh, we also got the OnePlus concept one announced late last week on display here. Uh, that's the one that uses the electrochromic layer to just make the glass opaque and hide the cameras. Uh, OnePlus says that you could probably get four or five cameras or even more under there because of this without making it ugly. So that, that's an interesting thought. Uh, the glass can also turn semi-transparent to act as a neutral density filter for shooting in bright conditions. I find that incredibly practical. Uh, OnePlus also working on a feature called uh, optimized charging for its, opti uh, for its oxygen OS which charges the battery to 80% while you're asleep, tries to guess when you're going to wake up and get it to 100%. That extends the battery life, it's similar to what Apple does in iOS 13. How about uh, some wireless power, Sarah? Well, the white charge that Allison Sheridan talked about on yesterday's show announced a partnership with Alfred Locks. The new Alfred M2 lock is the classic industrial key card lock, which uses NFC. Y charge can beam power to the lock over room size distances, though. So the ML2 lock starts at $699, and the Y charge system to power it will cost an extra $150 to $180. We'll see if this actually becomes a product. So many people have tried. Uh, Sunflower Labs announced what it calls the world's first fully autonomous residential security drone. The Sunflower Home Awareness System includes garden lights called sunflowers that detect motion and vibration. Uh, included, <laughs> including some machine learning so it can distinguish cars, animals, and people and show them on a map. Then there's the drone called the Bee, B-E-E, -E, that uh, it carries collision avoidance and GPS to autonomously navigate around and stream live video. Uh, the Bee, of course, is housed in a waterproof charging station called the Hive, uh, which also processes the system's AI. So the scenario is Sunflower detects an unexpected person or maybe an animal, sends you an alert. You decide if you want to launch the bee, which then goes up and starts running around to give you a view of what's going on. And uh, pre-orders are available now for 9950 bucks. Who's I, in? I love how these scenarios always assume it's like, I have 10 acres mm. and a private locked gate and many, you know, uh, lights that should be motion detected and they all need to talk to each other. There might be wild animals and lots of robbers. I, I really appreciate the marketing. I mean, uh, yeah. every, everything about this is very cute. Uh, until, until you got to the price point, I was, I was right on board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe but yeah, for my apartment. The kind of person who has that much land is, is more likely to pay that kind of yeah, money. But absolutely. also that's why they need a drone rather than a standalone stationary camera probably, right? Very yeah, true. No, that all makes sense. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Pop socket and pop socket light grips are popular, but they tend to get in the way of wireless charging. Well, your problem might be solved with a special Qi wireless charging pad designed to power right through the pop socket disc itself. Pop socket notes that you can't use it with the metal, with metal pop grips or pop grip lips, which has a lip balm inside that will melt. <laughs> it also may not work as well if your pop grip is not in the center of your phone. So, you know, there are some limitations. It is available now, though, in three colors for 60 bucks. Uh, there, there's also Asus putting an NVIDIA chip uh, with a Ryzen chip, and then the Ryzen chip can manage the NVIDIA chip. That's just unnatural. And uh, an 8K VR headset uh, for $8,000, but that's meant for NASA. Uh, there's there's tons more. Uh, and But we, I think we've brought a good sample of, the, of, of CES today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we didn't even get to the toilet paper robot. <laughs> well, now we have. Yeah, see, there <laughs> there's was that. There's a toilet paper robot. Yeah, concept only. Uh, thanks, everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories, anything you see at CES or other stories with that should catch our eye. Vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. And always join our conversation if you can. Got a great group in there chatting about everything we talk about on the show. Join by linking to a Patreon account at patreon.com slash DTNS. Also, shout out to our patrons at our master and grandmaster levels, including Dan Dorado Hankins, John Johnston, and Chris Smith. Also, thanks to Peter Wells and Sherlyn Lowe. Uh, it's so nice to have you both here. Sherlyn, uh, we'll start with you. Let folks know where they can keep up with all your work. You can go to Engadget.com or uh, hit me up on Twitter at Sherlyn Lowe. And what about you, Peter Wells? Uh, yeah, Peter Wells on Twitter. Um, I grabbed the name early, so yeah, <laughs> come on in. 
<laughs> uh, folks, the reason we're able to come here and uh, feed ourselves and put roofs over our heads while we cover all this stuff is because of you on uh, <laughs> supporting us on our show. Uh, the Patreon money funds most of the show and is the budget that, that lets us do this. So thank you for that. And if you'd like to be one of the people that supports the show, there's some perks to it. Patreon.com slash DTNS. We know you're going to have feedback from our CES coverage and we'd love to hear it. Feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com is where to send those emails. We're also live Monday through Friday, 4 30 p.m. Eastern. That's 2130 UTC. Find out more and tell a friend. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash live. See you tomorrow from CES 2020. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>